everyone. Uh, my name is Sukena. I am one of uh, Africa's ambassadors in Toronto, in Canada, and uh, I'm Moroccan, which sort of explains why I chose to present on Metis in Morocco today. Uh, this is my first forward, and I'm super excited about this. <laughs> so, David uh, who is Henri Matisse? Uh, Matisse was a French painter who lived in the 19th and 20th century. He was one of the 20th century's most influential artists. His career spanned an impressive six decades, and, uh, six decades and he became synonymous with expressionism and fauvism styles. Throughout his career, Matisse painted mostly common, uh, most commonly depicted figures, landscapes, portraits, interior setting, settings, and nudes. You can see on the side some of his main important works. Uh, and here again, uh, you might recognize a couple. So um, towards the end of his life, Matisse could no longer paint, but started making cutouts or découpage, uh, and they later became extremely famous as well. Um, in the early 1910s, Matisse was in his uh, 40s and sort of in lack of inspiration. Uh, he was advised by friends to travel to North Africa in order to be exposed to and inspired by a different environment. He was specifically in a quest for new motives. Uh, at this point, he had also been developing a certain interest for Islamic architecture, so it really came at a good point. Uh, his choice fell on Morocco, which he visited in the autumn of 1912 and again in 1913, more specifically from late January to mid-April in 1912 and from October to February 19. He mostly stayed in the city of Tangier, uh, which you can see on the side, uh, northern Morocco, which is a city that's both on the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, um, and uh, uh, surroundings. Uh, this period is described by experts as a pivotal phase in the artist's career. Uh, before we dive into uh, this, I would like to address an important caveat. While it is essential to acknowledge the colonial context um, of the Strip, Matisse traveled to Morocco in 1912, exactly the year where French protectorate over Morocco was established. Uh, this presentation mostly engages with the artistic and aesthetic dimension of the work. As interesting as this larger context is, and as important as it would be to discuss how Orientalism served as a propaganda tool in support of uh, French colonialism, and how Matisse was very much displayed in a certain European fascination with exoticism of faraway lands. Um, so the book I um, I am forwarding to you today and uh, I explored is this book called Matisse in Morocco um, that was published by the National Gallery of Art and resulted from an expo at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1919. It's more than 300 pages long, contains more than 255 illustrations. Um, I did not read all of it, obviously, but I went through most of it and uh, it's a fascinating book. Um, so, while in Tangier, Matisse produced approximately 20 oil paintings and 60 plus sketches using bold shapes and vibrant expressive colors. He described his experience as being constantly charmed by the cosmopolitan city, its bright and luminous lights, vivid colors, variegated sunshine, and striking exotic architecture. Matisse focused on two main subjects, as you can see on the slide, so uh, landscapes and architecture on the one hand, and portraits on the second. So we will first explore portraits and then go to landscapes and uh, Moorish architecture. Um, in total, Matisse produced about 10 portraits, all in traditional costumes. The painter was um, a fauvist, so he was very into color, and uh, he wanted to um, depict portraits as faithfully as possible, and he played a lot with colors, embroidery, accessories, and motifs, um, as we can see on the portraits of Amido, Zora, and Fatma. Matisse was quite struck by people's physiognomy and colorful garments, the daily outdoor scenes, the routines, and um, the colorful outfits. Uh, so whether it's the Laba, Gandora, the Balra slippers. And uh, it was this exuberance and flamboyancy that really was a great match for his, uh, what he was looking for in essence. Um, so uh, Matisse took a lot of sketches and he was very detail oriented. And uh, so he would take more than like five, six sketches at times of the model before translating it to uh, a really beautiful portrait. So this is one of the most famous ones. It's called Zora in yellow dress. 
and um, and uh, that's it. One of the most important elements that I want to highlight here is that uh, when in Morocco, Matisse was not able to find anyone who would pose nude for him. And instead of making it up, as a lot of Orientalists would have, he just um, stayed faithful to, to the reality of the situation and painted people in their traditional garments. Um, this is another example of a sketch turned into a portrait here of a Riffian fighter. Uh, as much as Matisse was not re really connected to polit the political context, he also uh, wanted to uh, depict someone who was actively taking part to the resistance movement against colonialism, and um, as, uh, as he did with this model. Uh, moving on to landscapes and Moorish architecture. So as I said before, Matisse was uh, very curious about Islamic architecture and um, during his stay mostly painted um, mosques, muse mausoleums and um, shrines. Uh, this is one of the most uh, famous paintings that he made in Tangier. It's called Landscape from a Window, Paysage vu d'une fenêtre. Uh, the view is from a window of this hotel called uh, Hotel Villa de France. Um, and uh, fun fact, you can still go to Tangier today to the same hotel, to Matisse's room to see the same view. So it's really nice. Uh, this is a different one. It's a panoramic view of the Bay of Tangier in which he combined a faithful depiction of the hills that surrounded the city with a more interpretive rendering of the city. Uh, so uh, his sketch, so in, the, in his sketch, he really uh, went with pen and ink and first through the main features of the cityscape, but then took more liberty with the, the general landscape. Uh, so this one, uh, the sketch on the left is quite meta actually, because it's a sketch that Matisse made of himself in the process of making sketches. Uh, so uh, so it's pretty nice, I think, and um, pretty accurate to, if you see the next picture, this is the place that he was sketching. Uh, it's a shrine in the Medina of Tangier. And um, the third picture is called Caspa Gate and also represents a view through an art gate of the Medina where Matisse used to spend a lot of time. Um, so this is um, more examples of sketches and his um, interest in architecture and mausoleums and uh, mosques and uh, uh, overall this sense of detail that shows in the plethora of sketches that he took. Um, and uh, people say, our experts say that he was more detail oriented when it came to architecture than with portraits where he, where he took a bit more liberty here and there. Um, so this is the last painting I'm showing you today. It's called um, uh, Les Marocains, the Moroccans. And uh, it came about four years or three years after Matisse was back in France. And um, in essence, Matisse wanted to reminisce his time in Morocco. Uh, and remember it, but by exploring it through a different style, instead of going with the usual impressionist or fauvist style where it's more detail oriented and colorful, he went with cubism and uh, more like darker colors than usual to kind of highlight that remembrance is never fatal and that um, he could not attempt to be specific three or four years later. So he went with a completely different style and this speaks to his philosophy uh, overall. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's about it for me. There are a lot of great things out there that I'm more than happy to share with you. And I, uh, last thing I want to say is I want to th thank Nisreen for coaching me uh, in making this presentation. I am, um, you can reach me, uh, I'm very present on social media. You can reach me on Twitter or Instagram or by email. And uh, thank you. Yeah,